Previously on Good Times Homestead with Jen and Steve. Gotta eat all these pickles so I can make more kombucha. Got to eat jalapenos so I can make more kombucha. All right, let's make some kombucha. Uh, but we're gonna make coffee kombucha. I'm gonna brew two liters of coffee. I want it to be pretty strong, I think. So for every six ounces of water, they say to use a heaping tablespoon of coffee. I'm using 64 ounces of water, so I'm gonna use a lot of coffee. I'm gonna use 11 tablespoons of coffee, maybe 12. That makes sense because I use about 10 or 12 tea bags of tea when I'm making a big gallon thing. Kombucha. This is going to be really strong. I don't know. So coffee kombucha has been around for s a few years. I've seen postings on it. Kombucha has been around for a long time, 200 BC, something like that. Uh, a lot of debated history on whether there was a Dr. Kombu that gave it to the emperor of Japan. Anyway, or if it's just kelp tea and it sat out for a long time. There's some funny videos on the history of kombucha, but coffee kombucha. I thought I thought of it, but people thought of it before. So what are you going to do? <laughs> so if you have a coffee pot, just brew some coffee. But I don't have a coffee pot, so I'm going to heat up some coffee in this pot rather than filtering it out like cowboy coffee, which I don't want to do right now. I'm going to try this cheese bag, cheesecloth uh, method. Hey, do you know what cheesecloth is not? A coffee filter. <laughs> that didn't work. Miss. Miss. Oh, here. So, cheesecloth, not a coffee filter. Mm. Use a coffee filter. Or a pot. Or the cold brewed coffee that we make normally. And just warm it up a little. I'll probably do that. We're making cowboy coffee kombucha. Yeah. Alright. First, you gotta check your hat for spiders. Here we go. I'm just gonna stir these coffee grounds into this water until it comes to a rolling boil. You wanna see how to make cowboy coffee? Check out Cowboy Kent Rollins. That's right. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> the, the recipe I found calls for a deciliter of sugar which comes out to 85 grams of sugar, which is in between a half a cup and a quarter cup of sugar. So weigh your sugar, 85 grams of sugar, or if you have something that measures deciliters. Mm. Ooh, nope, never mind. Never made cowboy coffee in the house. Never made cowboy coffee outside. Ooh. Bring it to a boil, let it cool off a little, pour the cold water in to let the ground settle to the bottom, and then I'm gonna filter it. Ember has informed me that this is cowgirl coffee. Cowgirl coffee kombucha. Are you a cowgirl? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I turned it down to six. It was boiling pretty high at eight and I let it boil for about three minutes. In one more minute, I'm gonna take it off the heat, add the cold water, filter it, and then let it cool down. I'm gonna filter and then I gotta add the sugar so that the sugar dissolves. Yeah, I'll let it cool down a little bit. Sugar will still dissolve in warm coffee, cooled down uh, hot coffee. Everything will be fine. So supposedly boiling your coffee like this will reduce the acid and possibly make it a little bit easier on the stomach. Don't know how that's gonna affect making kombucha, but we'll find out. Uh, also making kombucha with coffee, I have read uh, include fat, there's no fat in tea, but there is fat in the coffee beans. You know, you get that oil that rises to the top of your, your cup of coffee. So the oil might affect uh, how fast your kombucha can go rancid. So keep an eye on it. 
Maybe don't leave for two weeks uh, like I did with my last one. Ooh, I gotta check the kombucha uh, that I made, regular kombucha with the uh, Island Girl uh, SCOBY from Anno at Fermented Homestead. And so I've got some bottles of ginger pineapple kombucha and uh, Honeycrisp apple kombucha that we're gonna open and I'll use a little bit of that in this. Ginger pineapple, yeah, apple, the apple, the plain. <laughs> All right, we'll see how it is, and uh, that'll be our little Kickstarter for this one. Well, plus I've got the the Scoby Hotel, uh, and it's delicious. Okay, cool. All right, science. Let's do some science. All right. I poured the coffee from the pot into our cold brew coffee filters because it's a real coffee filter, and. Uh, there are no coffee grounds in there. So that cowboy coffee method of pouring the cold water into the pot and then pouring it slowly out worked really great. No grounds, there's no grounds in there. I don't even have to keep it in there and run it through this again. So I'm gonna pour this hot coffee into the jar. Ugh. Inside which used to be either pickles or jalapenos. I, I need to give it another little wash. And we're gonna use we're gonna break up the Island Girl uh, Scoby and use one of these. Woohoo! Yeah. Look at the weird Scoby. <laughs> yeah! Look at them all! <laughs> and that will forever be a, co a coffee Scoby. You can never make tea kombucha with mm -hmm. <sighs> Scoby again. Hi, Scoby. <laughs> You're not a Scoby! <laughs> Oh, yeah. Here we go. It's not that hot. Put the coffee into the jar. Mm -hmm. Coffee in the pot? Yep, coffee in a jar. Cowgirl. Cowgirl coffee. Cowgirl coffee. Kombucha. And olives. And olives. Yeah, I'm gonna add the sugar and dissolve it while it's warm. Don't break, but if you do break, I'm recording, and that would be a mess, but a good video. Back up. Don't come over here. 85 grams of sugar, one deciliter. Mm. Wooden spoon. I'll We're gonna let that sweet coffee cool down before we add the scoby. And then I'll see you in a few days. <laughs> I'm just drying my hands off. Because <laughs> we're gonna open. <laughs> we're gonna wait for the toaster oven and we're gonna open this kombucha. <gasps> Please pop, but not too much. Eh. Yahoo! Magnificent. It is magnificent. Look at that. Look at that CO2 Ooh, apple. This is the Honeycrisp apple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it tastes like sparkling apple cider. You're going to love it. Mmm. Let the other ones ferment a little bit longer. But that's good. Yummy. All right, we're gonna add one scoby to the coffee that has cooled and one cup of kombucha. So I'm gonna use some of my leftover kombucha that we tasted earlier and some of the starter liquid from in here. So here we go. I cleaned my hands, and I'm going to use the newest SCOBY that has formed on my kombucha that I just made, and there it goes, and some kombucha.
All right, we're gonna let that sit for about five days and then we're gonna check it. One week later. Okay, so I'm adding one teaspoon of sugar to each bottle. I am mixing in the SCOBY to get all the goodness mixed in throughout all the coffee kombucha. And I'm gonna scoop it, ladle it into the bottles so that I can use this jar as a coffee kombucha SCOBY hotel. So I don't wanna pour it, but I actually end up pouring it for the second one. I just don't record it. And here we go. There's one and there's two bottles done. I'm going to leave that there. We're recording. I'm so sick. Today's the Thursday. What, Ember? Did you just call me Ember? Oh my gosh. But take two. <clears throat> Coffee kombucha. And here we go. Today is Thursday. The eighth. Not promising. Hmm. Oh, let me taste this. There's fizz. There's fizz in there. It just didn't pop. I smell nothing. I don't know what it tastes like. Well, it's not bad. Ooh, there's the coffee. Oh. Ooh. Hey, that's really good. It's like... Coffee-flavored... You know, cookies or something. Wow. That's good. It looks bubbly. Nope. There's bubbles. Just not as much as the tea. I didn't put enough sugar, probably. But it's good. But it's not bubbly. But it's not bad, but it's not bubbly. So, probably didn't have enough sugar. Maybe didn't leave it long enough. We'll see. It's delicious. Try it. It's easy. It's the same as making kombucha, but with coffee. Maybe the coffee was too strong. Maybe I have to keep making it over and over and over again. Like the tempeh. Don't do it. <laughs>